In the repair shop today, Silversmith Brenton restores a precious piece that's testament to a lifetime of love. My father-in-law and mother-in-law uh, passed away within a day of each other, having been married for 60 years. Furniture restorers Will and Rachel unite on a project where time is of the essence. Obviously, I want to try and get it done because we've got a baby on the way. Because we've got... <laughs> have we? Have we? Have we? But first through the doors today is Kelly Bishop with a possession that is very close to her heart. Cool. Oh, I'm Jay. Hi, Kelly. How are you, Kelly? So, what have I... Oh, it's in bits. What is this? Um, well, this is a cock that my grandfather uh, left to me when he passed away last year. OK. But Steve, if you don't mind joining me. Hello, I'm Steve. Hi. Hi. Kelly, nice to meet you. Hi, Kelly. Let's have a look. Right, what do you know about the clock? My granddad uh, was, um, had it from his mother, and before that it was his grandfather's, and before that we just don't know. It's a German clock, I can see that straight away. It's probably made it around about the turn of the century, so, yeah, a good sort of 100 years old. And I can just stand it up like that. So, this would go on top in the slot like that. And then the horse goes in the little hole at the top like that. I see it's got a tail missing. Yeah, we don't know what happened to it. It's never had a tail for as long as anyone can remember. <laughs> right. Okay. okay. And you'd like us to pop another tail on? Um, I don't mind. I quite like it without the tail. Okay. <laughs> You've never known it with a tail. Yeah, so, so okay. it looks yeah. strange. What would it be? <laughs> yeah. A lot of these horses aren't original. Oh, really? Most of these clocks had a, an eagle on top. Oh, right. But during the war, because of the association with the Germans, oh. um, they put horses on top. They oh. changed them for the horse. Oh, right. Was your granddad an important part of your life? Mm-hmm, yeah. So my mum uh, brought us up pretty much on our own, and um, my grandparents were really um, supportive. Um, and then when I was a bit older, I lived with my nan and granddad. Simon kind of, you know, he was a good friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's nice. Yeah. Who was the smoker? My granddad. <laughs> <laughs> because this is absolutely yellow yeah. from, from, from nicotine. Yes, he uh, used to smoke a lot of rollies. In the same room as where the clock was? There. In every room. Oh, in every room. <laughs> <laughs> he was a smoker. When my nan and granddad used to go on holiday when I was sort of 16. They used to say you could have a few friends over, but the only rule is, don't touch the clocks. Um, because my granddad liked his clocks anyway, so they went away, uh, had a few people around. They were all crashing. Yeah. So I thought, I'm going to take all the clocks off the wall, turn off the chimes, hang them back up, and, you know, turn them all back on before my grandparents get home. Yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah. Except for I forgot to turn the chimes back on. Oh. And so I got into quite a lot of trouble because, not because I had a party, not because we drank all the tequila. <laughs> 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 but because uh, we hadn't turned the chimes back on oh. the clocks. <laughs> that sounds like something you would do. Never. <laughs> if, if I were to get this clock working and striking, would, would that be an annoyance to you? No, I would, love, I would love to hear it. You'd love to hear it strike. I would really love to hear it because it's... It, you'd go around my grandparents and you'd hear it every half hour. And at the time, for goodness sake, <laughs> yeah. but now it's like I'd really like to hear it I'd again. Like to hear it. Yeah. And that, that sound would evoke memories yeah. um, of your grandparents. Yeah. 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 Well, so, can we do something with it? At first glance, it looks as if this hasn't been serviced for um, donkey's years. <laughs> I would suggest at least since my great granddad died. So. Right. And that was early 80s. OK, it's probably extremely worn. And I hope it's not really worn. But we can look into that. Yeah. And we can get it sorted if it is. Yeah. Obviously, is so important to you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to give me a great pleasure to get it working again for you and get it striking and sounding good again. So, thank you for bringing it in. Thank you. All right, we'll let you know once okay. it's Thank you. Thank you very much. OK. Right. 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 You take care now. See you. Bye bye. The chime always meant something like bedtime or dinner time. If I can hopefully get the clock working again and I could hear it chime and my son could hear it chime and that was in my house all the time. And it's just 
exactly my granddad, really. Right. So we'll have a look at the movement now. Yeah. This is the important bit. Voila. As I suspected, absolutely filthy dirty. Yeah. It's no wonder it wasn't working. It's a very poor condition. You can see there's a fair bit of wear there in the holes. Yeah. The teeth are slightly worn, but not too bad, actually. I might have to tidy some of them up. So, you've got to take that all apart. Yep. Have a look at the teeth. Yeah. Definitely got to clean that window. That's just... Like, <laughs> that's yellow, isn't it? In this case, yeah. we don't need to make this super perfect. She I doesn't know. want to tell. I know. I can completely understand why she doesn't want a tail on it. Yeah. Because it's never had a tail as long as she's known it. Yeah. So it wouldn't be her grandfather's clock if it had a tail if on it. If it had a tail. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I'll leave you to it. Okie dokie. Pop the case over there and uh, get started. Uh, this is quite a good quality German clock. I think, actually, in my... In my 45 years of doing clock repairs, I've, I've, I've probably done, we're getting on for a thousand of these. Looking at this, it, it, it's a typical clock that's been left for a long, long time without any work being done to it. The build-up of dirt is incredible. Uh, how this clock was ever working, I don't know. So I've got to uh, strip it down, uh, rectify any of the wear, put it all back together and um, all being well, it should be OK. And uh, Kelly can have her uh, working clock. The repair shop restores many heirlooms to be passed on to future generations. Hi. Hi there. Hi I'm there. Well. Could you give me a hand, please? Yeah, sure. Thanks. But not many of them are in need of fixing as urgently as the one that Helen Sage is delivering. Right, did you follow me? Right. I see you have some caning work here, quite a lot of it. I think I'm just the person. Fab. Rachel, I think I've got something for you. As well as furniture restorer Will, this delicate cradle calls for the expert help of upholsterer and cane specialist Rachel South. Hi. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Oh, I see some of the caning's gone through here. This is absolutely stunning though, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a bit of a bit of a family heirloom. It's much loved. It's yeah. been well used, yeah. but I was so shocked when we unwrapped it. Aww. We kept it in a very cool, dry place. Yeah. Uh, and when I unwrapped it, I found this as just completely gone Aww. and heartbroken really at the sight of it. It's this, a beautiful piece. It's unbelievable. It's it's really something very special. How did you come by this? Well, <laughs> this we believe, was uh, given to my... I refer to her as my great-aunt Clarice, but she's really my great-great-aunt right. yeah. Clarice. She was lady's maid to the Duchess of Portland, mm. and uh, uh, that's really how her and Horace met her husband, because he was the gentleman's outfitter for the Duke. After Clarice and Horace had got married, when they were having a baby, that this was a present from the Duchess of Portland to them. And this... This cradle has come down through the generations of the family to be mine, and now I'm feeling the weighty responsibility of actually owning it. Is this going to go back into action once it's been restored? That's the hope. My daughter and her wife are due to have a baby in the next couple of months, so I'd really love to be able to, to, to let them use it in the same way I was allowed to use it. So looking at the cane here, it's particularly fine, this cane. Mm. So it's sort of, it's a Victorian yes. piece, isn't yes, it? Yes, Sort it is. of yes. gothic style with this lovely shape here. So what would you like us to do to it? Then? It would be really lovely if it was restored to its former glory, if the panels were checked and, and back without holes. It's lots parts of it. It used to have finials just on the top. I don't know where they've gone. I really don't know where they've gone. We, we've do you remember roughly what they look like? Yes, I do. Uh, quite similar to what's on the top of the base. They okay. sort of match. They're a, so, sort of about that size of it. Yeah. They used to sit. There were two on the top at one time. It sounds like a huge shopping list. And babies <laughs> due in two months' time. So... Uh, yes. Right. Well, on that note, Rachel, you better get it back to your bench yes, now. I think so. Um, thank you for coming down. 
Thank you very much indeed. It's been a pleasure to meet you it's and we'll let you know when it's ready to be picked up. Brilliant. Exciting. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Lots of work. Yeah, I'm going to have to get some of my really fine tools out. But I absolutely love this and the whole story that goes with it as well. It's a really unusual piece of furniture to have lasted this long. You're going to re-cane re, um, that entire panel, are you? I am, yeah. I'm going to take the whole panel out. And obviously, I want to try and get it done because we've got a baby on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Have we? Have we? <laughs> There's a baby, on, There's the a baby on the way. Yeah, what about you? So the finials would be handy. The finials would have had a cord attached to them so right. that mum gets to sit down and have a rest and she can just use the cord to so rock clever. the baby. So clever. It's lovely, yeah. It seems like we've both got a lot of work to do. Exactly. So you better yes. get rocking. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'll give you a hand over to your bench. Thanks very much, Will. Cheers. Rachel's first job is to remove all of the damaged cane work from the side panel. I'm just going to begin to cut through and you can actually see how dry and brittle that is because I'm hardly putting any pressure on it at all and it's literally just breaking away there. And that is actually coming off quite nicely. It always looks a bit brutal, I think, sort of cutting into the whole panel. Right, so... Next thing, I'm going to cut these little loops. Then you can begin to see underneath are the holes, and that's where the cane's actually woven into the frame. I feel a little bit apprehensive, because when you're sort of taking everything off, I'm, I'm really aware of the rest of the piece of furniture. And, you know, with things like this, I don't want to run any risk of doing any damage. But I think once I've sort of got everything cleared out and it's all cleaned up, then I'll begin to feel really sort of excited. Next into the repair shop, Joe Everett, with a treasured memento that plays a part in a romantic love story. Hi there. Hello, I'm Joe. Hi, nice to I'm meet you. Brenton. Hello, Brenton. What have you brought me? It's um, it's a powder compact in the shape of a small grand piano. Oh, needs a small piano player to play <laughs> that, won't we? Very small. This is a lovely piece. How do you come to own it? Tell okay. me about it. So we found it in my parents' in-laws' home when we, when the, after they passed away, right. um, and we were clearing the house. Okay. Um, both Carrie and Sam, my father-in-law and mother-in-law, uh, passed away within a, a day of each other, oh, having dear. been married for 60 years. Um, Carrie passed away in hospital, and then Sam passed away the following day at home. Um, oh, no. We suspect of a broken heart. He just didn't really want to go on without her. But we found it in with a bunch of cards that Sam had given to Carrie, anniversary cards so and birthday cards. So it would have been a cards. gift, almost certainly, oh, from think, him to her. Yes, I think so. I mean, I think the fact that it's broken and she'd kept it. So what's wrong with it? Well, it's quite dirty on the outside, okay, yeah. but inside, this little clasp is broken. OK. And the mirror <laughs> is missing. And then there's another thing that goes on there for the... There's, there should have been a little powder yeah. uh, a sponge, really, that would have gone in okay. there, uh, which is missing. I'm so not au okay fait with powder, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unfortunately, I am. Um, <laughs> but what's really nice about it is it would have sat on your dressing table yep, or if you yep, were out for the night, yep. you would be able to put that down and then apply your powder. That's amazing. And then you just fold the legs back up and pop it in your bag or whatever. Fold have it all back up and pop it away. Brilliant. So we need to make a mirror for it mm -hmm. and... Make that so it stays down on its own. Yes, Lovely. hopefully. And I'd like to get it repaired um, for my daughter, who right. is the youngest of their eight grandchildren. Okay. So she was only six when they passed away. Right. And um, we thought it might be a nice memento to give to Charlotte um, to remember her oh, nana wow. and granddad and the love yeah. that they had. So this would be really nice if this was in tip-top condition for her to Absolutely. remember them by. Yes. The piano has got a great amount of sentimental value to us because my father-in-law would have given it to my mother-in-law and it sort of signifies the special relationship that they had and the fact that they were married for 60 years but it's also a testament to how much they loved each other. What a lovely piece this is and what a lovely story as well. So I've got to establish whether this is brass or white metal, first of all. 
Secondly, I've got to get a magnifying glass and see why this little clasp isn't working here and make a template for the mirror, cut a mirror, fit the new mirror. That's the easiest part of it. And then maybe put some powder in it and powder my head. Stop that shining. Outside in the metalwork shed, Brenton starts by doing a careful test clean on the delicate object. It's a nice piece in good condition. It's just had a bit too much love. Very, very, very gentle polishing. Should bring this back to a nice gold color. Fingers crossed. So the little bit I've polished up there looks OK. Until I've got it all done, I won't know. The repair shop is caring for a 100-year-old clock that was crying out for a little time with horologist Steve. It was so tired and dirty that it had completely given up the ghost. Real build-up of thick, gooey dirt. The mechanism is now free of all the clogging oil and dust, and Steve can begin turning back time. The next stage is I'm going to go through it and, and check and see exactly where all the wear is, and then I can start working on rectifying. I've got one wheel here that's got worn uh, trundles, which are the, the, the teeth that the, the main wheels run into. Uh, because basically, in clockwork, the teeth are supposed to roll around each other. And if you get excessive wear, the teeth will then uh, rub on each other. Not only does that create a lot of friction, but also it creates a lot of wear as well. And that's why it's important to have a clock overhauled regularly. It's not just the wheels that need a service. This pivot goes into this hole here. And that hole is basically worn across the plate like that. And I need to bring it back to that point. Um, and that's uh, by rebushing, And that's putting a plug of brass in to the right position um, so that that pivot will be nice and snug and work properly in the right position. Just got to measure up the, the pivot and uh, then put the correct bush in for the, uh, for the job. There's a whole array of different sizes. One of these brushes. I'm now going to use the bushing tool. I'll just pop it in there. Now we have the, the bush in place. There we go. And this wheel fits in there beautifully. There are over 100 intricate working parts to this clock, most of which need renovation. So I've just got to replace all of these bars now. And once I've done that, I'll seal the end and uh, it will be as good as new. That should run now for hundreds of years. Over at her bench, cane expert Rachel is working on a piece of Victorian history. This cradle was originally a gift from the Duchess of Portland, and Rachel must now attempt to replicate the original intricate cane work. I've got this super fine cane. It's 1.7 mil because I want it to match the rest of the panels. It's quite important that everything is exactly the same as the other, the other panels. Um, but, it, but it is very fragile. Hopefully, when it's complete, Helen's not going to know which panel has been re-caned. So, um, just to start, Kane's gone through the hole there, down into the corresponding hole here, and then it loops back through. I've got to fill in the hole of this panel and then I'm going to be on to stage two. So, off to a good start. Following in her father's and grandfather's footsteps, Rachel is the third generation of her family skilled in the caning craft. 
She's going to have to call on all of her years of experience for this job. Things really slow down at this stage, and it's really quite fiddly to begin to put this weave in. I'm trying carefully to keep my verticals straight and the horizontals straight, but actually it's really lovely at this stage because you can begin to see this small intersection here of all four strands, and that is one of the main characteristics of this traditional six-way cane pattern. When all the weave actually comes together, it is really satisfying. It may be that you would think with a small baby, you know, putting its fingers in here and picking at the cane, it might not be that practical, but actually it's really tough. While Rachel continues to weave her magic, Will is puzzling over a tricky new addition to the cradle. Helen did mention that it used to have two finials on the top. What I've done is, um, after doing a bit of research, finding out what it would originally look like, I've come up with a drawing of what I'm going to make. Finials are small decorative ornaments placed on the tops or ends of furniture. Will must craft the new ones from scratch on the wood-turning lathe. So... Slowly trying to get into more of a cylindrical shape. What I'm trying to do is get it closer to the maximum width of my new finial. And once I get to that size, then I can start marking off the other bits of detail that I need to start carving in. So hopefully those different sections there will end up looking like those different sections there. It's really tricky because if the wood is quite brittle, you have to be really careful when you're um, turning it to quite fine pieces because any um, sudden pressure in the wrong area and it can split. I've rounded off the um, squared edges on the wood, carved in the detail, and I'm using some sandpaper just to smooth it all in. The smoother the surface, the better the polish. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty chuffed with that, actually. A century-old German wall clock has been keeping Steve very busy. But now, the end is in sight. So the last job I've got to do on this clock is to uh, re-hole this mainspring because it's, it's ripping out. You can see how it's ripped here and here. Basically, that's a broken end of a mainspring that could cause a lot of damage to the clock if that goes with a bang. I'm just going to snip off the broken end. I'm going to heat it up to red hot. Then I'm going to draw the heat away very, very slowly. And that's basically softening the steel. If I were to leave it hard and brittle, it's likely to, to, to break off at the end. Now the clock is all ready to go back together again. Will and Rachel have been working in tandem to repair and restore the Victorian cradle. Its owner, Helen, is due to welcome the arrival of a grandchild in just a few weeks' time. And keen to keep things on track is repair shop foreman Jay. Getting broody yet? Get broody. <laughs> Look at the amazing job that Rachel's done on the side. Now, Rachel has done a blinding job, but she's going to stain it up as well to marry it all into the rest, isn't it? Yeah. OK. So, I've made up the missing finials that would have been originally on the top. Because we think of everything, don't we? And I like that. Oh, well done. Jake, would you do me the honour of gluing them on for me? So, if you pop a bit of glue in there, look at this teamwork, just a bit of... In there? Yeah, just a tiny bit in there. One. Was that slow-moving glue? <laughs> <laughs> cool, blimey. That's it. 
Lovely. Beautiful. A real team effort. That is a real team Rachel, effort. myself, and now you. That, that is nice, though. Yeah. It, it finishes it off well, yeah. doesn't it? Well, it takes your focus to the top, but really what you're going to be looking at is the baby in there. There's the baby. Silversmith Brenton is repairing the metalwork of a beautiful vintage powder compact. But to bring it back to full working order, he needs a little help from soft toy restorers Julie and Amanda. Hi, ladies. Hello. I've got this little powder compact. Wow. Oh, gosh, that's adorable. Getting, and it's missing its puff, which goes in there. I believe that you're quite good with a needle and thread. I told you and that. Quit. <laughs> the rumour got out, and it's way beyond my skill set. So do you think that's something you could do? Absolutely. The little um, sifter inside is pink. So if we can go for the same sort of colour as that, either pink can I, or... Can of I course. have Because that's got a velvet edging, I think. Would you like yeah. it velvet? I'll take your advice on that. OK. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. But it's all still... It's still there, 60 yeah. years later, Absolutely. that's still in there. So if I Absolutely. made a template the same size as the sifter... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's yeah. not a problem. We'll Excellent. do that for you. So I'll make your template. Yeah. Thank you Brilliant. very much. Thanks a lot. OK. OK. As well as making a template for the powder puff, Brenton has also made one for the missing mirror that once lived in the lid of the compact. The mirror has been cut to fit the piano. It now copies my template I made. However, the edge of the mirror is sharp, and the edge of the mirror on this piano should be beveled. Beveling is cutting a small 45 degree on there. So the reason we need to bevel is, one, it takes the sharp edge off, and two, it actually looks really nice. That extra 45 degree cutting around the edge just makes the mirror look really pretty. Now, there is a machine that does this. Um, however, because it's such a small piece of mirror, I'm doing it by hand. I'm using wet and dry paper and slowly working away at it. Once I've got all the way around, I can fit the mirror back into the piano. Inside the workshop, Amanda has volunteered for powder puff duty. I've never actually had to make a grand piano shaped compact puff before, but there's always a first time for everything. I'm using really nice cotton velvet that is this lovely pale sort of powder pink. It looks kind of faded, so it looks a little bit aged, so I think that's quite nice because it, it will sit well with the age of the, of the compact. From what Brenton was saying, I think it's a good job that he's handed this over. We do most of the sewing, and uh, he's not confident in the sewing department. So he needs a little bit of help on this one. Outside in the metal workshop, Brenton's addressing a minor malfunction. So Joe's asked me to make the little clip inside work. The clip isn't catching. Looking at the edge here, um, there's a slight bend up on it where it's been pressed down against this clip. Um, ideally, the clip needs to be pulled back before the lid's pushed down. And what's happened is someone's pushed it down and it's bent this little tiny edge of the lid. So all I need to do is see where it's just slightly going up and with my parallel pliers, just gently straighten it. And now that should clip together nicely. And that's it, perfect, that's closed now. Steve has taken the German wall clock under his wing. He has spent hours transforming the filthy wall mechanism. But although the clock workings may now be tip-top, the same can't be said for the rest of it. This case is so nicotine-covered. Um, all I'm going to do is polish the case, fit a finial on so it's tighter, and polish the glass up, and it's going to make so much difference. It's very, very yellow at the moment. I'm using wire wool, and I'm just going to clean it up. I see the, the water is turning yellow already. Squeaky clean. 
good. I'm just going to uh, pop the mechanism back in, then I can hang it up and, and test it to see if it works right. So, just got to go and uh, hang it on the wall. And the tailless horse. There. Good. Kelly's going to be so pleased with this. Oh, James, that's wonderful. <laughs> Kelly and her sister Claire lost their much loved granddad last year. And the clock he was so proud of came to Kelly. The clock was in quite a bad way. I would say it didn't work, which is a bit of a shame, didn't chime, didn't tick. It was a little bit uh, yellow. My granddad was quite a heavy smoker, smoking rollies. Nobody was allowed to touch the clock, so my nan was not even allowed to clean it, which annoyed her somewhat, I would say. <laughs> now every cog, pivot and spring has been lovingly refurbished. Oh, wow. It will be a constant reminder of the man that meant so much to Kelly. He goes on here. Me and my granddad were pretty good friends, I would say. It's not your typical grandfather-granddaughter relationship. We used to have good chats, and I used to ring him up and ask him for advice. I thought my granddad was awesome. I'm excited to get it on the wall now. There we go. Wow. It looks a lot better. It does. It looks a lot better, doesn't it? It looks um, just like I remember it. Oh, I should wind it up, really. There you go. That's good. It's a good sign. It's cool, right? Like it. Happy? Really happy. Wait for the chime. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, it is just like being at Granddad's. Happy? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Granddad would love it. Granddad would love he it. Would. He'd be so pleased. How do you feel having it up on the wall? Mm -hmm. Having that memory of Granddad in the house, sort of, such an important one as well to him. It's really nice. It's really nice. I get to sit on the sofa and the clock will be there. I wake up in the morning, the first thing I see when I come down the stairs is the clock. It's chiming and it looks fabulous. It's nice to have a piece of my granddad in the house. Over the moon. Back at the workshop, Rachel is putting the final touches to the restoration of the Victorian cradle. The last part of um, this restoration of this cane crib is to actually reproduce the colour of that panel that was there originally. It's quite important because it needs to match these existing panels, which, as well as being dyed originally, have also, over time, they've sort of got their own patina to them as well. The cane will need many layers of colour to match the existing panels. This coat that's going on is um, an umber pigment, and I think it's really sort of bringing out this lovely, rich quality, this rich colour that really ties in with the existing panels on the cradle. So I'm quite excited at this stage just to get this last little bit of colour on here. Once the final layer has dried, the cradle is ready to be reassembled. Right. OK. Carefully at Careful. the end. Don't want to knock that cane work. Easy. That's okay. it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well. God. Right, come on, let's give it oh, a little... Look oh, look Oh, look! That is so nice. Such a smooth rock as well. The cradle has been passed down through five generations and is now restored and ready to welcome the sixth. Now owner Helen is back to collect it. 
It was a, a very sad item, the cradle. It was in complete disrepair. It wasn't functional anymore. But looking forward to seeing just the, the work that Rachel and Will have both done. Hello, Will. Hello, Rachel. Good to see you again. Nice to see you. Hi, Helen. Lovely Hi. to see you. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite frightening, actually. Oh! Because really? uh, uh, I'm really excited to see what you've done, because it was quite a job, wasn't it? You've had your work cut out. Yeah. <laughs> we have indeed. Let's show you what we've been up to. Fabulous. Oh, wow. <laughs> Gosh, that's, that's just amazing. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. It's, well, it's beautiful again. What can I say? You've just done some amazing work on it. And I haven't seen it look like this. I truly haven't seen it look like this. Uh, uh, it's a real rebirth for this piece of uh, family history for us. How long has it been since you've seen it rocking? I suppose when Sarah herself was born, and that's, that's 30 years ago now, uh, is the last time it, it truly rocked properly as it, as it does now. It's just such a long time. But it is so, well, it's magnificent, really. Do you remember which panel it was that had the hole? I think I think it was this one it here, was, yeah. which you, you can't actually see that there was ever a hole there. No. This panel, I took the whole panel out and re-caned it for you. I really love doing it, so it was a real pleasure for me to work on it. And also knowing about your family history and also that there's a baby coming along. Yes, so that very soon. was a really very sort of motivating thought while I was working. Rachel has done a fantastic job on the panel there. Yeah. It was a pleasure to, to turn these new finials here because um, I think that it actually makes it. So it, it, it really makes the piece. It's almost like the chair on the top of the cake. Yes. I've never seen the finials on top, Will, and I'm just, just so delighted with what you've done. I, I really, it just is absolutely well, it, brilliant and I am truly grateful for what you've done because this is just such a piece of love it's held love yeah it is a piece of love your love for furniture I can <laughs> I can see but it will now go on and another generations when I'm long gone will be using it and I think that's just so wonderful well it's been an honor to have it coming through the repair shop uh -huh. thank so you. thank you it really has yeah I just overcome really with the whole emotion of it it looks so beautiful, the cradle, and I can't wait for the rest of the family to see it. It has seen five generations within the cradle and the next generation is due in a few weeks' time. And it's just so lovely to be able to take this beautifully restored family heirloom back home for the next generation. Silversmith Brenton has been restoring a powder compact, a vintage love token that was in desperate need of some love itself. Amanda, how is the puff going? Just finished it. How about that? Can we see if it fits? I hope so. I've got everything well, crossed. Well, I've cut the template so it doesn't feel it's been my fault. Oh, that's brilliant. I reckon Joe's going to be chuffed with that. I think so, Because yeah. she did mention that it didn't have a puff. Yes. And she doesn't know she's getting it. Yes. So this would be a little bonus. She's got a piano fixed and it's complete yes. now. I think from a girly point of view, um, that finishes Just the, the right colour as yeah. well. So yeah, she's perfect. She, Absolutely. I think she's going to be really pleased. That's great. Thank you so much for doing that. Brilliant, thanks. Thanks. With the owners of the compact due to collect it, Brenton still has one final fix. I think that's all working now. So now I've just got to glue the mirror in. We don't want to put too much glue on. One, we don't want it all squirting out the sides. And two, someone might want to get this mirror out again if, if it unfortunately got broken again. You don't want it to be too hard to get out. So three little dots will be sufficient to hold this mirror in place like the original piano had. The piano is now repaired. It's back to its original condition, and we've made a box up like the, the one the piano would have come in, and uh, I can't wait to give that back to Joe and Lottie. Joe and her daughter Lottie have arrived to collect their family heirloom, once given by Lottie's grandfather to his beloved wife. Hello. Hi. Here you are. 
Um, Lottie. Lottie. All right. How Hello. Are you doing? Right. Tell me what your mum brought in. A piano compact that um, was quite broken and dirty. And was missing a mirror, so okay. we're really hoping that... Not much wrong gonna... with it. <laughs> and it belongs to? It was my nan, um, but when she passed away, um, it got passed down to me. So it's yours then now, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So you want to see it? Yeah. Oh. <gasps> wow, that's great. That's brilliant. Look how amazing that looks. It's so polished and you can see all the pattern. And now for the moment of truth. <laughs> yes, a mirror. Mm. Excellent. And the, and the little powder. That's, That's really brilliant. cool. Wasn't expecting yeah. that. And actually the, the pink as well. It just well, sets it, sets well, it off. The, the bear ladies helped me with that because I'm not very good with that sort of thing. So uh, they helped you with the colour choice, so did they? When we've got all these skills here, we might as well use every single one of them. <laughs> And you've got some else you've got for them as well? I have, indeed. I've got a replica box that I made, which is a copy of the original box it would have come in. Cool. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's cool. exactly the emblem that was on the top of the boxes that I've seen. That yeah. will set it off beautifully, box, won't yeah. it? Oh, that's amazing. Brilliant. Thank you. No problem. But is Lottie going to be able to use it when she gets a little bit older then? <laughs> I might let her use it. We've actually got, she's just bought her first face powder and it's a loose powder. Okay. So actually you could, you could put it in there and use yeah, it, couldn't you? Okay. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah. So what's it going to feel like using your grandmother's compact now? It just be something else that I can relate back to her. Oh, thank you so much. That's not a problem at all. It's really gorgeous. Are you going to look after oh, it? Thank you. Oh, we will. Yeah. That'll be cherished, I'm sure. Yeah. That's good, isn't it? That's very nice. I think Brenton has done an amazing job yeah. with it. Um, it's much, much yeah. better than we'd expected it to be. A lot better. What the compact does is sparks memories of actually just how much they loved each other. That mm. everlasting love that they have is, is really nice to remember it with such a special item.